Hello viewers, welcome back. So this is part three of our series of session on F12 configuration for stock items, inventory master. So in the last session, we saw a couple of options under F12 configuration for inventory master, that is alias and description for stock item. So in this session, we will see a couple of more options under F12 simple configuration for stock items. We shall learn about two options in this session under inventory details. Number one, use stock group for stock items. This option by default will be set to yes. Number two, provide units of measurement UOM for stock items. This option again will be set to yes by default. Now let us go to tally and understand these options and its relevance of setting it as yes and no. Let us go to stock item master creation. So from gateway of tally, masters, select create and select stock item. So you are in the creation. Now you press F12 configure. So under F12 configuration, configuration, so first we will understand use of stock group for stock items. If you recall our session on inventory fundamentals part two, we discussed about the need for stock group. We also understood the purpose of stock group. Just to recap, inventory grouping is a convenient way of grouping products for ease of identification classification, accessibility, and to differentiate by the nature of stock item, its value and durability. Generally, when the business have many large number of inventories with different types of products and different brands of products, then grouping them logically becomes easier to manage the movement of inventory. In this session, we also discussed about the creation of groups and subgroups. Now, let us understand why this option here and what happens if we set it to no. Once you create a company in Tally, we learned that by default, Tally provides 28 groups and two ledgers for accounting master. But for inventory, Tally does not provide any default inventory masters, but it provides a root group called primary. Let us take an example. In your company, you are dealing with few stocks, say about 50 to 20 items, and you do not want to create any stock group. By disabling this option or setting it to no, while creating any stock item, Tally will not ask for any group to be selected, but internally it will put them under the primary group. And when you view your stock statement, all the items will be listed directly in the report. Let us now set this option to no and let us create a stock item. So I'm making this option as no, just press N for no and press enter and press control A. So now, if you notice, the under is vanished. So that means it is now not going to ask you under means under which group that you want to classify this item. So let me say I'm going to create new stock item. Okay. And uh, I just create this. I come here, I select numbers. Okay, and then we will discuss about this rate of duty a little later. Okay, and then I'm going to save this item. So here, now I did not select any group. So when I go to my stock summary, I come to my stock summary and when I press enter here, you will notice that the new stock item that we created is now listing directly under the primary. So the other names that you are seeing are the groups that have been created and items have been created under those groups. 
and link to those groups. So if you want to see, just put your cursor on any group and press shift enter. It is now going to give you all the, uh, uh, now these are again subgroups under the parent group. So if you want to see any item under any of the subgroup, again, you can, you can select a particular subgroup and press enter, shift enter. You will now see the item because how do you identify an item? We, if you recall, we discussed that the ledger and stock item will be displayed in italics. The advantage is that it, it, it speeds up your inventory master creation without the hassles of selecting stock group. Let's come back to inventory master creation again. So I'm going to use uh, keyboard shortcut hotkey. So under master, I'm going to say create, select stock item and press enter. And now you press F12. Let us understand the next option, provide unit of measurement for stock item. Under our inventory fundamentals part two session, we also understood what a unit of measure is. To quickly recap, unit of measure is a definite magnitude of physical quantity defined and adopted by convention. Unit of measure is used as a standard measurement parameter for products. Examples of different types of unit of measures are numbers, kilograms, liters, meter, gram, box, etc. Now, Tally provides three different types of unit of measure. One is simple unit of measure. The other one is compound unit of measure. And the third one is you can also have alternate unit of measure for a stock item. A simple unit of measure is an example that we discussed earlier, that is numbers, kgs, etc., which we also learned in our earlier session how to create a simple unit of measure in tally. Let us understand the option here and the impact of setting this option to no. We will take a use case to understand this configuration. Let us say you are providing some kind of services, say uh, AMC charges, repair charges, maintenance charges, etc. And you do not want to have multiple ledgers created under sales, but you want only one accounting ledger as sales. But you want to know income from different services. Now, there are two options in Tally for the users. A, you can enable cost center and capture individual services to analyze the quantum of income. B, you can create a stock item and get the same result. The advantage of creating a stock item is that you can use the stock item in the invoicing while you are generating a bill for your customer. Whereas you cannot use cost centers in the invoicing. Since this is your requirement, all the services, you will now create them as stock item and you don't need any unit of measure for these items as you will capture only the value in the invoice. Now, by setting this option of unit of measure to no, Tally will not ask for any unit of measure while creating the master. Let us set this option to no and let's create a stock item called repair charges and see how we can use this item without the unit of measure while invoicing. So come here and set it as no and press control A. So I'm going to create a stock item called repair charges. Okay. So no inventory group or stock group and no unit of measure. So just create the name of the item and press control A. Now let's say that I want to invoice my customer 5,000 rupees towards 
repair charges. So now since I've created this as an item, so I'm selecting voucher. Sales is already selected. I'm entering, selecting a customer. Save. So I have one sales ledger. I'm selecting sales ledger. And now I'm going to select repair charges. If you notice here now, the moment I enter, this is the description part. So you will notice the cursor is automatically going to the amount. It is not asking the quantity because we said we don't want unit of measure attached to this item. So now I'm saying 5,000 rupees is what I'm going to charge towards repair charges. Enter. Okay, I can save this master, come back, page up. Then you say control P, you come to preview. And now you will see the preview that your repair charges invoice is made for your customer. Okay. So this way, now when you come to your stock summary, you will, you will have your repair charges uh, here with the, with the value also. Now, when we go to advanced inventory, we will also see how to handle. So we are seeing now that it is showing negative balance here because there is no invert. So how do we handle this kind of a situation? We will cover that separately in our advanced inventory. Thank you all for staying till the end. In the next session, we will discuss about alternate unit and we will understand how this alternate unit will be helpful to businesses who have multiple unit of measure for a single item. Thank you very much.